Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. So glad to have you with us. You may have noticed I've only been posting one video a week because I've been working out in the garden and eating on the fly. But today I wanted something yummy. So I made some chocolate walnut meringues. These are so low carb and yummy and so easy they almost make themselves. So I'm going to make these for you. And in the meantime, if you would subscribe and give us a thumbs up, we would really appreciate it. Let's get cooking. Now before I start cooking, I want to show you this cute little thing. This was sent to me by Joanne Summers, who is a subscriber and a viewer. And I want you to look at all that tiny, beautiful, delicate stitch work. Uh, this was a quilt square, and she made for me this little pin cushion. Thank you, Joanne. Ingredients and carbs. I have here Baker's Cocoa, about 3 grams per tablespoon. I have a half cup of Splenda, no grams per tablespoon. I have, I'm going to use an eighth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. Doesn't count. Yes, this is cornstarch. I'll explain that to you later. It's optional. I have, I'm going to use three eggs, large eggs. I have about a half cup of walnuts and vanilla extract and i'm going to put all that in the info section so if you didn't have time to follow me there don't worry about it it'll all be written down now i'm going to separate three eggs into a really clean bowl and i just wash this bowl i see a couple drops of water i want to dry those out uh, i usually wash it in just a little vinegar water just to make sure there's no grease no oil uh, residue then I'm going to separate the eggs, uh, and I'm going to separate three. Now, eggs generally are easier separated cold, but then they need to come to room temperature before you start beating them. Uh, there's many different ways to separate eggs. This may not be the easiest. It's the one I'm using right now. Just where I crack it and let the uh, white fall off into a bowl, and then I put the yellow into another bowl. And you also have probably always seen me separate eggs uh, one at a time into a separate bowl to check for them being bad. But I just bought these, so I know they're good and fresh. Or I hope they're good and fresh. And they were. So the egg yolks, I'm keeping them separate. I'm covering them. I'm going to put them in the fridge. And I'm probably going to make lemon curd tomorrow. And that uses a lot of egg yolks. So these won't be wasted. I don't want to ever throw those away. And then I'm going to get my Splenda ready and I'll explain about the cornstarch. You never see cornstarch. This is just a quarter of a teaspoonful. You never see cornstarch in any paleo and low carb recipes. But this small amount makes your um, egg whites beat better and stay fluffier when you're using Splenda. And this adds less than one grams of carbs for the whole batch so I use it it's optional here are my eggs I'm gonna put in an eighth teaspoonful of cream of tartar technically that's also optional uh, but most folks do add cream of tartar to make meringue it does help make them fluffier also I'm using my hand mixer and uh, you know you can do this in your big old kitchen aid but I like to do this with a hand mixer because I like to really get with it when I'm beating it you want to beat as much air into these and I, as you can. And I'm going to do this until I get soft peaks. And when you're making meringue, there comes a point at which the eggs are solid white and they make trails when you move your mixer through it. And there's no more translucent appearance. That's soft peaks. And you want to get to soft peaks before you add your sweetener. I'm going to add my Splenda in about a third at a time and beat between uh, additions. Now, if you want to make this with sugar, it's exactly the same thing, except you don't add the little bit of cornstarch. Uh, Splenda bakes pretty well. Actually, it bakes really well, but there are some differences between baking with Splenda and sugar, and cornstarch is one of them. When I'm baking with Splenda, I generally add that little bit of cornstarch to both meringue 
and to whipped cream. It just makes it a little bit more stable. Also, things baked with Splenda don't brown the same. So there we go. We've still got soft peaks, but they're a little firmer. Next step. So now I'm going to add a half teaspoonful of pure vanilla extract. And you know, you can make these meringues in many different flavors. And if you want to add a different flavoring, you can. You can add almond flavoring. You can add peppermint flavoring. If you heard that little four-year-old in the background, she likes vanilla and chocolate. So that's what we're doing. So we'll mix that a little bit more. We're getting really, really close to the stiff, the really stiff peak stage, which is what we're going for here. I don't have much more to add. Let me show you these peaks. Ooh, look at that. Nice and stiff. Perfect peaks. Now let's talk about chocolate. I'm using Baker's Cocoa. It is unsweetened. I have plenty of Splenda in here to sweeten it fully. I'm using one tablespoon, which gives you about three grams of carbs. You can use much more if you want them darker and more chocolatey. Uh, but I'm, I'm trying to keep a carb count here, and I want to keep the whole bunch under 10 grams of carbs, net carbs, uh, so that they're only about one carb, one gram of carbs apiece. So I've beat that in. We've got those nice stiff peaks. And let me just make sure that all the cocoa is mixed thoroughly through. And let me just tell you, this tastes pretty chocolatey. It doesn't look really dark, but it tastes chocolatey, like a chocolate chiffon. Mmm. Got the chocolate in, and I'm going to put in the nuts. I'm using walnuts. A whole cup of walnuts has about 11 grams of carbs, 6 grams of net carbs, I'm using somewhere between a quarter cup and a half cup because that's how many I have. You can add more if you want to. Uh, the net carbs on this is going to be about three. We are up to three grams of carbs for nuts, three grams of carbs for chocolate. Less than one from everything else. Those are net grams. Uh, and I'm going to make 12 to 15 cookies. And I've got two spoons here. I'm making a big heaping teaspoon. Most meringue recipes make much smaller cookies. I like the big fat ones because they're a little chewy inside. Not so much crunch. You can make them half this size if you like. And you don't have to space them far apart because they don't rise. They might melt just a little and spread out, but not much. So I'll get these all on the cookie sheet. I had to add a little more parchment. My oven has preheated to 300 degrees, and I'm going to bake these for 30 minutes. Now, different meringue recipes will call for you to turn it down to 200 and cook them for like two hours, but this works just great. And after 30 minutes, this is what you have. Now, these are very fragile right now. Kind of brittle. Now, I was talking about differences between Splenda and sugar. They will be browner if you use sugar. So don't be fooled and think they haven't cooked long enough. 30 minutes at 300 is long enough. And you just want to carefully remove them from the parchment and put them on a rack to cool. As they cool, they will be less brittle. Uh, they'll become a little bit chewy. So I would let them cool about 30 minutes. They're more like cookies after that 30 minutes than they are puffs of air. Right now, they're almost like cotton candy. These have cooled, and I've got them on a plate, and I'm going to try them. You know I love these things, and I'm eating low-carb uh, and this will satisfy that sweet tooth. When you bite into them, they now have a little structure, having cooled, but they're very soft, and the inside is just a little bit chewy. The nuts add lots of texture, and the cocoa adds just a tad of texture, too. I'm going to eat four of them because I'm hungry and I want something sweet. 
and these are just a little more than half a gram of net carbs per cookie. If you're watching carbs, oh, you want to try these. If you're not watching carbs, make them with sugar. You want to try them anyway. Thank you for joining us on Debbie's Back Porch. Hope to see you again tomorrow.